or whatever he didn't make an honest woman out of her whatever the case may be however that that is evolved you know what i mean then he comes out he's now got a new relationship which he didn't introduce us to after having been public with all his previous relationships so it's inconsistent it's unhonest it, it, there's a lot of doing things now to project this person he wants to be the quester Hey family, a quick one. Over 87% of you are consuming this content every single week but are not subscribed. That means you are enjoying the growth conversations but you are not liking, you are not subscribing and you are not sharing it with others. So please, I plead with you, please subscribe so that you can share the love, you can share the growth and you can share this wonderful platform and wonderful safe space with others as well. Enjoy the episode. But there's another one which is not Bowen. My dad was building there um, when the the estate started. Anyway, let's get our audience not alienated by what we're talking <laughs> about. <laughs> um, welcome back, bro. It's oh, been... you... oh, we're recording. Yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry it's about been that. it's been almost a year and a half since officially you and I sat down. Yeah. Uh, in our humble beginnings, when we were still struggling and and things weren't working out, but I remember you told me keep pushing, bro. You've got something. Keep yeah. pushing. You've got something there. Yeah. You can communicate. You can broadcast. Yeah. So firstly, I want to thank you because yeah. um, a lot of people say Nota goes to podcasts because he's trying to be the next Andrew Tate. But, <laughs> but you saw something in me and you were yeah. like, keep going. Yeah. Because I'm sure you don't say that to everybody who does invite you. Because yeah. there are people who are like, ah, this thing, episode 10 is far. I just don't go. Or you just don't go, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, so thank you, man. Um, yeah. And the, the numbers are showing that there is something there, definitely. And we con we're going to continue building in this space of 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 new media, because that's how I like to refer to it as. It's it's mm. a new media, mm. and it, it it has its own ways of how it's conducted so that it 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 it, it, it succeeds. Mm. Um, do you think we we're catching up as South Africa? We're at the right place now. Yeah. Well, I think that. Um... The first thing that really put us on was Facebook, mm -hmm. you know, uh, just because of how big it was. I mean, we can speak about the Mixit era, but that was more messaging, mm -hmm. you know, although there were chat rooms and stuff like that, but it was within small controlled amount of groups. With Facebook, that's when you could really reach out to a lot of people, you know, and um, uh, when Facebook was uh, first introduced, it opened up a lot of opportunities, especially if like for kids of my generation we were already on myspace before then uh when we got facebook we could start being entrepreneurs we started yeah. hosting events and everything yeah. else and yeah. promoting them through facebook and we didn't need to um book the djs that are already on radio mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. the reason what they were being booked was to promote events and stuff like that and um now you know there's a whole lot more in the creative space you know there's a whole lot more opportunities there's a whole lot more different types of events that are happening people are doing master classes people are doing seminars and all that type of stuff um and they're able to foster and curate uh, an audience online which is you know very good um as far as like our media consumption culture in south africa uh i mean we've been dictated to most of the time so uh you watch the number of channels the etv you know, the SABC and um, the multi-choice channels. Um, and you've got like three broadcasters where you could be um, placed on screen. And um, that gave too much of an influence to the people that were on screen because of the barriers of entry to that. And then the people that decide who gets on screen can then abuse the power. That is created by that uh, barrier of entry, you know, it creates like a bottleneck. It's like um, um, when there's a roadblock, right? Um, if you really want to get through it quickly, you can pay mm -hmm. and then you, you bypass uh, the bottleneck. But mm -hmm. most people can't pay and then they're stuck in the bottleneck. Um, and that is done by inefficiency. And when you've got very little competition in the space, that's where 
um you get those inefficiencies um now we've got maybe let's say four social media platforms we've got the meta platforms we've got um the google platforms uh we've got x and we've got tiktok right it's the same thing but just online mm-hmm. um and those platforms um allow you to curate an audience build an influence market products all of that um maybe sometimes even better than the traditional media platforms of print media magazines and newspapers um uh, broadcast media radio and television um and the barriers of entry to actually create the content uh, content and find an audience for it have been removed um but the same time them removing those barriers of entries they've created new barriers as in now you need to you know align yourself with the algorithm mm-hmm. to get out there to create an audience and um you don't own that audience mm-hmm. you know you can be taken off that platform if you offend sure. uh, their terms of service or if you just uh, you know um some of they don't want to work with anymore and um that is the now the challenge that we need to overcome and getting to the next phase where you know um we've got new native media mm-hmm. on our own platforms and the people that are creating the content actually own the platforms um that people have access to and we need to democratize the access to different um platforms so that um people don't get captured by an already captured audience like you get captured by the YouTube audience that's the YouTube's audience yeah, right yeah, you are yeah. finding people within YouTube's audience Correct. that connect with your content um but those are people that have been programmed into liking a certain type of content mm-hmm. um, because mm-hmm. it's what they are overly exposed to it's what's advertised to them um getting that audience to now follow you to another platform which doesn't have you know a content library like youtube has yeah, or any of yeah. these other things is very very difficult yeah. and that's the challenge that we now face we are now facing yeah uh, for, for formalities purposes and not to assume that mm. every single person that's watching us mm. watched us two years ago mm. um i i'll just give a brief intro um mm. also where have you been if you don't know who nota is <laughs> uh, i think of or where you, have i been i think of you pot? as a friend of the media industry and yeah. as a friend of the entertainment industry more specifically yeah uh, the south african entertainment industry and its links to the world as well mm. Right, yeah. you've been behind the creation of many superstars, yeah. uh, whether directly or indirectly. Yeah. Being a friend, being an advisor to a person yeah. silently, um, yeah. the fact that they can pick up a phone, their phone, and talk to you, they can yeah. text you, you can go hours on end advising them on what direction to take in their career. And yeah. there have been instances where you have been directly involved in creating the music, in publishing the music, yeah. in funding the music. Yeah. Um, so uh, is Nota right now still that person or have you evolved into somebody else who's, who's, who's creating in a different league, in a different space? Um, yeah, well, I mean, uh, everything that I used to do, I still do, just maybe on a different level. Mm-hmm. And now the outcomes are um, obviously seen by the rest of the world. Um, so, you know, um, I wanted to revolutionize the music industry in South Africa. You know, I wanted to take it back to the communities where the the music is being created um, and also help people within those communities have access to the knowledge on how they can um, create their own art and promote it. Um, so I still have that role. Um, because a lot of the people that I trained are still active, are still successful and thriving, you know. So me being in the founding phase of what they're doing, you know, um, is still relevant to this day. And um, when it comes to, like, the media, because I was reliant on the media to promote the talent, Mm -hmm. you know, um, uh, that I was working with, I realized that I also need to have my own media platforms, Mm -hmm. you know, Um, whether it be my own personal media presence or it's platforms that I then establish and build and grow and stuff like that. And that would assist me in helping other people. So um, now, you know, I'm a a media investor, invest in in media platforms. Um, And also 
um, a marketer mm -hmm. as well, not just marketing personal brands, but marketing like um, uh, consumer brands and um, a, a patriot, just someone who is um, passionate about showing the best that South Africa has to offer in every way or um, in every sphere um, that I, you know, occupy. It's and even beyond that. It's interesting you call yourself a patriot. Are you a patriot to South Africans, all South Africans and every South African that lives in it? Or, or are you patriot to minority groups or groups that were disadvantaged before? Because you speak about, for example, mm. you made an example of you want the music to go back to the people who created it, like in Makasi or in the rural areas, mm. for them to know how to promote it and own it. Mm. But now you're speaking about being a patriot to South Africans as a whole or, or, or not? Am I getting it wrong? Yeah, no, it's to South Africans, mm -hmm. like and the vision of South Africa or, you know, and um, helping to maintain uh, our finding identi our founding identity, identity, you know what I mean, as a rainbow nation. Um, so that's it. Uh, uh, I'm a Mandelite, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and um, I take the good and the bad yeah, yeah. Uh, when it comes to looking at someone like Mandela, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And also, I also take personal accountability mm -hmm. for my contribution to his vision as well. Um, you know, I don't just sit there and criticize and say, oh, Mandela sold us and everything yeah, else. And yeah. everyone has to go through that phase where you feel like that. But that's when you then start to Take inquire more. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then yeah. find out, okay, then you then eventually you end up putting yourself in his shoes. Mm -hmm. And then you say, if I was him in his time with the society that he was in, I would have acted, you know what I mean? And um, now that I'm um, looking up to him in this time, how can I, you know, um, best uh, pay homage to him or, or the sacrifices that uh, those um, uh, around him made to ensure that we've got the opportunities that we've got today to criticize mm -hmm. and to say, oh, he was a sellout. You know what I mean? The average South African that you're fighting for, though, um, for the lack of a better word, mm. it's now called the masses. Mm, the masses, yes. <laughs> Funny. Um, do you think that masses understands the fight? And uh, do you not sometimes feel like you're wasting your time? Because you go online just as a mm. small microcosm representation of these mm. people. You go online and you're like, there's a sheep mentality here. I'm fighting for a person and they're fighting me back. Mm. I, I, I speak about these uh, ideals, about owning your own business. For example, there's a thing you said when we last sat down about you, you don't think hiring black people works in a company because mm. like one way or another they're going to disappoint you mm. but instead of investigating that 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 term and people discoursing what it's mm. about why do we say black people are difficult to work with as mm. employees you will get immediate attacks mm. so these people you're patriotic towards do you not sometimes feel like i'm wasting my time hey no because if i did then i just keep quiet yeah. you know like um a child who is not berated by their parents when they do wrong it's a child that's not loved. Mm. Um, so I love my people. Uh, whether or not they love themselves is s another matter. But I love my people, and I will continue to fighting, uh, fighting for them. I mean, I've, like I faced a lot of challenges fighting for my people, you know, fighting against the bad influences that sanitize some of the atrocities that mm. happen within our community. You know what I mean? Um, I've been sued, you know, f over a million and a half rand. You know what I mean? That I had to spend um, um, paying not just lawyers, lawsuits, it, the people that are suing me, it's legal fees. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Um, and, you know, um, it didn't kill me and it hasn't killed me and it won't kill me. So uh, it's making me stronger in my love and my resolve. And I realize by confronting what I'm up against, mm -hmm. um uh, why it's important for me to never give up that fight for my people because, you know, um, the people that are trying to destroy me um, wouldn't be putting up such a fight if um, what I was doing wasn't good. You know, didn't what I mean? have impact. Well, no, it just wasn't good. Okay. Like, you know, we live in an evil world, mm -hmm. you know what mm -hmm. I mean, which mm -hmm. creates a hierarchy where the elite exploit everybody else. You know what I mean? That's evil. That's bad. Sure. And I'm trying to ensure that we disempower the elite, mm -hmm. you know what I mean, mm -hmm. and put power back into the hands. Like, let me give you an example. Look at, um, because I worked with this talent for such a long time, a guy like Questa, when I found him, 
you know, um, um, uh, as someone that I'd like to uh, work with and work on. Yeah. Like my job was not really to create a superstar, right? And my job was to create the exact opposite of um, the examples that he had in his own personal life. So, you know, I mean, it's written in the songs that have been released. If you listen to the songs, you know, um, he had challenges, um, his parents getting divorced when he was seven years old, you know, his father starting a new family, the whole entire thing, nine yards, the relationship between his mother and his father, um, you know, all of that um, was, you know, um, written in the music. And as he developed as an artist and as a human being, I knew that he'd pour into uh, the music, the things that he's learning and, you know, and then we progressed. And then by the time we went our separate ways, we went from, you know, a boy who's struggling with finding his own identity, finding, you know, um, 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 a way to forgive his father for what he felt that was abandoning the family, you know, um, a way to forgive his mother for what he might have felt was not having enough resources, mm -hmm. you know what I mean, to support her whole entire family um, or all her children, you know. And um, he, he was he's a middle child as well. So I was a middle child. So I had that empathy, uh, well, at least with his mother. Um, I had that empathy of that, you know, that middle child complex. And, you know, um, the, the thing about a, a lot of middle children, you know, um, are either underachievers or overachievers. <laughs> like, interesting. Yeah, they're never mm -hmm. in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> Where they're supposed to be. <laughs> or, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, yeah. Um, so, um, that's the one thing. Um, so, we went from where he started and everything else and even in the environment that we're in the record label that we're in at Bada Bing, which is where I cut my teeth in learning how a record label works you know I had to extricate him from that situation because um, it was not um, uh, boding well for him you know um, as a human being um, uh, the company was going to go down you know or whatever and I was like no building a life, life raft and then we'll build our own ship from this wreckage and um and it then, uh, by the time, you know, uh, we went our separate ways, he's now getting married, starting a family, you know what I mean? Um, uh, making an honest woman out of his then baby mama. Mm -hmm. uh, and, um, yeah. And um, the main thing for me was like, okay, how do we not create a Zola situation? How do we not create a kid that comes from the township mm -hmm. that has got all this potential, that is bright, that is intelligent, you know, that will then end up becoming a superstar? How do we then make sure that that superstar story is not his identity? He doesn't mm -hmm. identify himself sure. as a superstar. And that's, that's the thing. It is, it's very hard. And sometimes it's very hard to like, you know, someone ends up blowing up or growing up right in front of you and you have to be the one that humbles them. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And um, it, I, I don't know. I've got a, a, a strict parents. You know what I mean. So when I was a kid, like I hated my parents. All so that's what I would say. I hate you. What you know what I mean? Uh, but I knew um, as soon as I became an adult that what they did was good. You know what I mean? They didn't give me what I wanted. And we get into these situations, and now we're adults. And now you know maybe we're peers. I'm two years younger than Questa in, anyway. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So. Now a younger guy than you is now your parent. Correct, correct. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And also has to straddle the line of being in a position of authority but not abusing that authority. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, as well. And, um, and that for me was... Um, I wanted to create a little microcosm that the entire country could see. And then how do you end up having a Guaido star, you know, who is from the hood, grows up, you know, and becomes a responsible father and a husband with his wife and kids and a family and a household. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. And is able to provide for them through his work, which is um, celebrated by, you know, the community. And um, I feel like um, I've been able to successfully do that. You know what I mean? And then create a model for other people to be able to follow um, from from what they've been able to see. Did happen. you did you guys do it first? Did the, what do you mean? Did, did the, the, the rest of the hip-hop industry follow suit after you did it with Questa? Or did you find it, uh, it, it, it with a good foundation? I'll say this because a lot of 
commercialization of the hip hop music industry. Mm. People love in, uh, it, mentioning that at the forefront of it, there's an AKA and a Casper in your vest. Yeah, and both of those guys yeah. call Quest and say, You are a role model. Okay. Job done. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, so you're saying you did it first with Questa. Either way, <laughs> at the end of the day, he's received calls from both those guys yeah. to say that he is a role model to them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He might not be the most celebrated. Correct. But he's the most respected. Because they know what it takes be- behind the scenes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I yeah, guess in like if you go hit for hit, he's got more hits. You know what I mean? Whatever. He's done the numbers. He's outsold both of them mm-hmm. and everything else. And he's still a family man. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, to the extent that it was such a good job done that when we went to go perform, uh, Sway was doing an event in Texas for South by Southwest. Uh, if, if people don't know Sway, Karaway, Sway's universe, like he's been, he's the guy who was arguing with um, Kanye about, you don't have the answers. Mm-hmm. And he's the guy in my Instagram profile picture. And he, when he introduced Quest on stage, he says, this is the Kendrick Lamar of South Africa. Mm. So, you know, that was basically the thing yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you speak about um uh, uh, i'll use that reference jumping onto questa being a family man as well outside mm. of just being a star mm. and now a white star a white star mm. now he's transitioned furthermore into being a family man more out of the limelight uh more of a good man the industry for the lack of a book corrupt yeah absolutely. yeah absolute power corrupts absolutely mm-hmm. um do you think the the, the, the new wave of the, the piano artists are reliving that just in a different era? Because it seems like them as well, there is a, a superiority complex that they are living with. Where The problem is that the AKA and Casper popularity is bigger than um, the Cuesta respectability. Unpack it. That's it. And time will only tell. Do you understand what I'm saying? Is that... As an, uh, I'm a piano artist, you should be saying, I want to end up like Quest. I want to have a family, I want to have a household, or I want to end up like Kid X. I want to have a family with my children and household and everything else and not be owned by uh, this job that I do. You know what I mean? It doesn't become my identity, you know? And um, the trade away, though, is that you become less popular then, less of a star. And is, is, it, is it unfair if a young kid wants to be a star? Their, their thing in life is to be a star. Yes, but that's the, that's the thing that stars die. Sure. In a blaze. Mm. The stars don't just... It yeah. explodes. Yeah. yeah. And, do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Exactly. So do you want to go into a path of self-destruction? Mm-hmm. Or do you want to go into a path where you have prominence and then you'll be able to reverse the generational curses or pay off generational debts that your family has mm-hmm, because mm-hmm. that's who you are beholden to your family mm-hmm. do you understand you are Cuesta you are Casper you are AKA but truly you are Kenan Sense Forbes of, you are Sense of Ilagas yeah, yeah, you understand yeah. you are Refilo Apollo yeah I get you I get yeah. you so it, it, it's a different one it's a difficult one though to strike a balance because everybody around the superstar mm. who seeks to benefit something by creating the superstar mm-hmm. never ever says to the superstar don't lose yourself don't lose yourself don't lose yourself yeah because they that's they stand to personally benefit yeah and that that's the worst thing i mean like i i had these issues like not just like um through people i worked with within my own household okay you know what i mean where i was like yo i'm a human being and you know my wife says no i'm a brand i'm a star <laughs> Do you understand? And you fighting for the right cause is making people now want to take away my star. You know what I mean? And I'd rather keep my star than keep my family. Do you understand? And um, it's just that I was very pragmatic in saying, listen, I need to get to know this person and how they're going to handle fame and all that things. And, and I chose not to have children. Had I chosen to have children, um, it still would have happened. But now the children would have been you know, the innocent casualties, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Um, so, like, that's why I'm very circumspect, knowing that, you know, the life that I live is a very public life as well. Um, even when I get into a relationship with someone, like, I'm not having kids unless we've been married for, like, five years at least. So I know your character and I've been able to assess that this is a person who's not going to end up, you know, wanting to dissolve our household, dissolve our marriage, and then give me baby mama drama mm-hmm. and then mm-hmm. torture my children, mm-hmm. you mm-hmm. know what I mean? Um, so yeah, um, I hold a very high standard for the people that come into my life. Um, and I've uh, said it before, um, with your colleague, you know, uh, I have friends, I have lots of friends, do you understand? 
no one knows my friends. Like I posted my friend <laughs> on New Year's Eve, like we're in Cape Town at yeah. the beach. It was a New Year's Day. I don't know. It was, yeah, it was one of those days. So yeah, we're at the beach and we're just celebrating life. We've known each other since like he was five and I was six years old. Uh, uh, I'm 34 now. Mm-hmm. You know, he's 33. Um, his birthday is when? 28th of January, same day as J. Cole and AK. Um, so, like, uh, that's who I center myself around. To those people that I grew up with, when I go back to them, because, you know, I'm always with my friends or whatever, um, do they still see the same person that they grew up with? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Despite the corruption that happens in the industry. And that's why I never mixed the two. I never brought my personal friends. I never wanted them to be corrupted by this industry because I've got the discipline to be in a room full of drunkards and not drink, mm-hmm. drink only water. Mm-hmm. You know, be in a room full of drug addicts and deviants and not partake in what they're partaking in and be there to do the work that I came to do and have the influence that I came to have. You know what I mean? Based on my upbringing. And... Um, I cannot expect everybody else to have the same amount of discipline. Um, so that that is why I just said, no, let me just separate the two. Yeah. And now, you know what I mean? When I said, hey, all you industry associates to hell with you, you know what I mean? I've still got friends that I go back to, whereas other people don't. Once they leave the fame, all they have is their famous friends and everything else. And then they don't have people that they can turn to. You know what I mean? I've got people that I can, yo, I've got an interview in the morning. I need to shower at your place. Yeah, I don't have yeah, water. Yeah, yeah. I, I can do that. You know what I mean? Why? And I don't need to worry that, hey, this person's now going to tell Daily Sun, hey, this person, shower, is that my place? Because mm-hmm. it's not, it's a casual friend or whatever. Or I don't need to worry about it's stories spreading or anything True. else because I've got my friends. You know the real I mean? ones. Yeah. Why do you attach authenticity and being real throughout this conversation? You keep on mentioning that if you can go back to your family mm. and they don't see a change in you, if you can go back to your friends that you've, you've known since you were five or six mm. years old, they still feel like you're the same person. Why do you not... Uh, why do you why do you feel like changing or as a human being is wrong and you don't see it as evolution rather? Yeah, no, you can grow, mm-hmm. you can develop, you can learn, but for you to change your essence and your being, you know, uh, means that there was obviously something wrong with it, you know, or it was incompatible with where you want to be in life right now, and um, unless you come from you know a traumatic situation which, you know, is heinous, you shouldn't want to do that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. And also another thing is that I've observed, like even within my own family, like it's like a social experiment, you know. I mean, I'm the middle kid. I've been able to see uh, my older siblings. I've been able to see my younger siblings. And um, it's not just about like fame and popularity. It's like um, because of how we are as black people in this country and the lack of opportunities, I mean, uh, something as simple. My sister got degrees. Have, I'm a dropout. But because of her degrees, you know, she was perceived as, you know, the... Um, Intellectual one. The one who can no, really. no, thought leader. I, no, not really, actually. I, I was always thought of as in, in, mm-hmm. intellectual. Um, just because even as a child, they were like, yo, this kid, this pace at which he learns, he picks up things, is like remarkable. Um, so I was fortunate in that I had privilege um, um, for that. You know what I mean? I was always treated as a bright kid. Uh, my sister is dedicated, hardworking, applies herself. Sure. You know what I mean? So that's why she was able to study and stick with it and get to her PhD by the age of 35. You know what I mean? As a black woman, you know, which is almost unprecedented. PhD with two master's degrees as well. You know what I mean? She she stalled herself. She could have got it earlier. Um, in, imposter syndrome. Yeah. Um, so... That changed the way in which, like, I, I saw myself and my role. Because I also saw, uh, I had a very close relationship with my grandmother. You know what I mean? And I didn't get to know her for long enough. And um, uh, just um, the type of person I was, like, um, I used to love spending time with older people, like, sapping up their knowledge. Um, so, like... I would like really soak in like everything. I'd spend time with her just listening to her stories, listening to her talk about our family and the roles that people play. Also, I've got a, um, a, um, a cousin, <laughs> she's my sister uh, culturally, a uh, cousin, Agnes, you know, suffered from uh, Down syndrome. Yeah. And um, like um, 
uh, everybody like in the family, like in the rural areas in Zanin, uh, where my dad is from, um, the way they treated her was like, okay, we treat her with kids' gloves, but we also like give ourselves a distance. And like when we'd visit, like everybody say, hey, ngatlangina Agnes, it's October, and uh, which means, hey, don't play with. Agnes, she'll pinch you or whatever. Mm-hmm. You'll be playing, having fun, and then she'll just pinch you. She never pinched me once, ever. You know what I mean? I was probably the only one of my cousins who she never pinched and everything yeah, else. Yeah. And um, I think a lot of that had to do with, like, you know, my own, um, uh, uh, I guess, psychological interventions that I had, you know, from just being a bright child you know, you get taken to therapists and all these things. And then when you get to the therapist, they're kids with learning disabilities and all these things and you're exposed to that. So from the age of four, like that was my group. Those were <laughs> guys I'd go to therapy with. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I, we all saw each other as kids and some of them had like brilliant abilities that, you know, would bemuse people. But because they had learning challenges or personality challenges, um, uh, then they'd be ostracized in some type of way. And I never wanted that to happen to my sister to be ostracized. Like even all all my pals that we went to, you know, whatever psychology classes or even at my primary school, you know, we had kids who had even physical disabilities and everything else, um, uh, uh, dyslexia, everything, you know what I mean? It was a real madhouse. I mean, (laughs) call it that, you know what I mean? But like when we went outside, let's say we're playing against Northcliffe. And they're teasing us because we're the geeky nerds. You know what I mean? I'd be the one who'd be like, okay, out of my friends and the other kids that go to school, I'm probably maybe the one with more physical ability. And I'll be like, hey, you don't touch my little geeky, nerdy, weird um, uh, friends. And I had to defend them. So that helped my relationship with my own sister and then helped me also empathize with other people who you know, whether I have, they have challenged backgrounds or you have challenged minds. And um, just wanting to be there to help, like always assist. Um, it's just something that's in me. You know what I mean? Uh, I was stuck in four-way traffic once, and I realized the cause of the traffic was some lady was stuck. You know, her car had um, pulled over, and I got out of the car. I pushed the lady. You know what I mean? And I didn't even think nothing of it until I saw some blog post, some... The lady's like, hey, this guy, I didn't even know she recognized me. Mm, you know mm, what I mean? I didn't even think of it. Um, but she posted about it. She's like, hey, he pushed my car, you know, out of the way. I was stuck in traffic and he helped yeah, me out. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Good Samaritan. And for me, those are things I don't even think about. You know what I mean? It's like an instinct. It's something that comes from home, you know, and that's just how we're built. So when I go out there into this world that is corrupting, it's corrupting, dude. You know, um, if you could go to any party... Right, and um, you want to be a hit with the girls and the guys. Sorry about that. You have to behave in a particular way, um, and um, a corrupted way. No, in a particular way. Okay. No, no, let's not even say it's corrupted. Mm-hmm. But to be the playboy or whatever, mm-hmm. to be the one that you need to behave in a particular way. Yeah. Um, and when you're famous, you get. All of that without having to behave in to a particular behave, way. You don't yeah. have to earn it. So, Do you understand what I'm so. saying? So that unearned privilege of popularity mm-hmm. then makes people blind to the wrongs that they are doing. So. Because no one is able to call them out and they cannot self-regulate. And then that's when they spiral and then end up becoming, you know, um, bad people. There's and no being corrupted of by the accountability. System. None there is that. no accountability yeah, for famous people. There is no people. accountability. There is no, uh, 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 whatever. There is no, <laughs> like if you're famous, you're unaccountable. If you're famous and beautiful, you're unaccountable. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like um, Tabo Besta, handsome guy. Handsome guy. Mm, mm, mm. Do you understand what I'm saying? As much as people want to see him go to jail for whatever they feel like he did, he's still a handsome guy. Women yeah. are still going to love him. Yeah, yeah. Do you understand what I'm saying? So. <laughs> to the extent that someone are impressed, they say he's intelligent. Like how could he pull that off? <laughs> you know? <laughs> they, Pretty privilege. Um, you know what I mean? And you can get away with it. You can do bad things. You can use your pretty privilege. I mean, I like to think I use my pretty privilege to do good things. Yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. I'm light-skinned. I've got freckles, you know, which puts me in like uh, like two-tier pretty privilege. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I'm at least minimum six foot tall. You know what I mean? Oh, clean, height as mm-hmm. well. You know, um, uh, I'm articulate. I'm well-spoken in um, the most... Um, uh, 
um, uh, uh, what you call? I guess you're small in your body. The frame. most, you, you, the, the most uh, uh, I guess, the languages that you need to know to do business in the world. Correct. You know what I mean? To, uh, to conform in the system. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. So I'm I'm good at that. Um, so I could get away with a lot, but I don't. You know what I mean? I hold myself to a higher standard. Um, and that's why I don't turn a blind eye to people getting away with a lot and abusing and misusing their privilege. You know what I mean? I want I want to go to into, pimp a butterfly. <laughs> yeah, I want to go into this because I believe there is a lesson here um, that can be learned. But I'll, I'll appeal to you to try not make it what what, what can I say uh, hurtful to to people involved, right? Mm-hmm. Um, you, you you before you left for America. Yeah, it seemed like we were watching Nota go through the motions of the pains that were happening on his personal life and he was putting them out in the public, mm. right? And then six months to a year, you can correct me of how, how many months you were away when you were in America. Mm. You're coming back now and you're not that person anymore, in my opinion. Mm. Or, or maybe it's toned down for what I've been able to consume of you and, 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 and so on and so forth. Was it a deliberate decision to now say that I need to deal with my personal life in a personal manner because this is real people and there are real people involved. Um, and and, and in, in doing that, would you believe that you made many mistakes by, for the lack of a better term, bleeding in public? No. Nothing changed. It's that I did something they couldn't do. I went and spent however many months overseas. Mm-hmm. It takes a lot of money. Okay. Money buys people changing their perception of you. Okay. So then people say, oh, this guy can afford to live in America. Whatever. Oh, damn. So we were judging him as crazy. Or, or maybe he's not so crazy. Mm-hmm. Oh, let's actually assess. Oh, the, oh, that's why he's able to afford. Oh, this is the work that he's done. Oh, my goodness. People's perception of me changed. Okay. I never changed. Okay. I never changed my approach. So that's it. The perception of me changes, which means that when I sit down for an interview with someone, they're asking different questions. They're asking them with a certain level of respect that they now have for me. I hear because of a perception shift. That's it. Yeah. And it was something that was deliberate. I knew that that's exactly why I was leaving the country, to do that, to create that perception shift, to actually show that, okay, the thing is that familiarity breeds contempt. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you think people were then over-familiar before you left? That's it. Correct. They just got over-familiar too quickly. So I was like, okay, let me show you how unfamiliar you are. Yeah. 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 We're not at the same level. But was that the mistake then that you 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 created room for over familiarity? No, that was just me presenting myself to people who did not know me okay. in the past. You know okay. what I mean? Okay. And that's the cost of it. Okay, I is hear that you. people are I going to you. now criticize you, and they're going yeah. to pick apart, and it's going it's going to take time for after they pick apart, then they can assess. Okay, these are the things we picked apart and we criticized. Are they actually true? You know what I mean? And a lot of the fallacies that they had have fallen away now, mm-hmm. uh, so the the perception changes as well. You know, um, but I've always been the same person. You know what I mean? I've always been the same person. You know, I, I come to your podcast whether you got 10 uh, subscribers or 10,000 subscribers. Mm-hmm. I'm still the same person. Yeah, correct. You know, um, so, yeah, I think uh, that's the thing. And, you know, I give people room for that. I, I, I don't judge them. And then the bleeding publicly, yeah, I have to be publicly because, you know, I'm a human being. Mm-hmm. And also I don't want to be dishonest. Okay. You know, um, you know. I'm honest. <laughs> that is it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, you know, um, I, it, guess, I guess, I guess the, another thing, I don't involve my friends. I don't ever want to put my friends in a position to have to speak on my behalf. And maybe that you could say is a mistake on my part, but like just having my friends be where they are and in my life. You know what I mean? Without the public or the public scrutiny. When I'm amongst my friends, I know that I, there's no public scrutiny. You know, and also they know that they they can be brutally honest with me. Sure, <laughs> it's like, sure. yeah, you know what I mean? Um, so um, that really helps me. You know, um, even when I came back, I mean, I spent my time, you know, spending more time with my friends that I haven't had time for. And um, that's been refreshing. Uh, so... The only way you'd get a, a proper defense of me, it's like I can't expect any of these people that I've ever worked with or anything else to be the guys that say, hey, listen, this is how you should assess this person's character because I know that's not in their nature. They're, they're takers. Sure. You know what I mean? And I've always known that. 
You know what I mean? I worked with them knowing that they take us, knowing that they'll take us, take and take as much as they can from me and yeah. they'll never, you know, pay it back or whatever or be grateful, yeah, you know, or even yeah, say thank yeah. you. Um, so I knew that um, already uh, and I accepted my fate. So I don't hold it against them and I don't ever want, you know, to have now uh, um, my family have to feel like they need to be in defense of me because, I mean, like, um, does that mean that they're blindly in defense? Do they defend certain things? Do they pick and choose? Do they cherry pick? You know what I mean? Yeah, you know, what if yeah. I do do something wrong? Correct. Now, do, they, do they still have to defend? Yeah, and then, you know, yeah. Now, they have to face the consequences. You mm. defended your brother. Yeah. And now he's doing this. Yeah. You are just as evil. You're an enabler. You know yeah. what I mean? So, yeah, I don't want to put them under that scrutiny. They didn't choose that life. I did. The, and that's the, it. The, the life of being in public. Yeah, that's it. Correct. Yeah, I chose it. And that's why I'm so harsh on the people that are also in public. Because... Okay. You chose this life. Mm. All of us chose this life. You understand <laughs> what I'm saying? And we should be able to be critical, not just of ourselves, but of one another, because we um, occupy uh, a very privileged space. Do you know what I mean? Which is influence. Yeah. Having influence. Over people's lives. Yeah. You, you know what I mean? Oof. Like, dude, over the time that they spend on earth. Mm, mm, yeah. Mm. They, they buy what we buy. They eat what we say is good to eat. You know what I mean? They go to the places that we say are cool. You know what I mean? And and that's it. It's the same reason I don't go to Dubai. Explain. I mean, what happens in Dubai? Debauchery. It's the place where, you know, the conservative, Arab, Islamic, Muslim people have this little place in the desert where Westerners and all the other debauchery is allowed as long as you do it without people seeing. You know, you know what I'm saying? So that is a, a place where the most corrupt go to enjoy their corruption without any consequences. What place do I have there? You know what I mean? I'll be going there, pulling um, people um, off of one another, saying, hey, you cannot defecate on a human being. You know what I mean? Condemning everything that I see around me. You know, um, ignoring the beauty and the opulence because I don't really think that uh, uh, the material beauty... Uh, that is is put there to mask the goings on um, are good things. So uh, yeah, um, th that's the same reason. You know what I mean? Uh, I can live without um, needing uh, to go to Dubai. Steve Biko, Martin Luther King, Winnie Mandela. Mm. I can name many people mm. who, in their time, they were persecuted and not celebrated. Mm. But later Jesus on, Christ. Jesus Christ as well. <laughs> but later on, when people reflect generations later, yeah. people go back. There's books about them. There's seminars about them. That's there's it. conferences about them. Yeah. There is academic articles about them. Yeah. Do you believe Ntlamun Obalo is one of those people? Uh, who is misunderstood in your generation, in your region? <sighs> nah, I don't think I'm misunderstood. Uh, that's the thing is that, you know, when you get into the public eye, a lot of people then have opinions of you, um, but not a lot of people know you. The people that know me, know me, you know what I mean? And they would never say that about me. They would never judge me harshly, you know what I mean? The people that um, know me have an open door to me, and they've never closed doors for me. Sure. Do you understand? So I judge myself on how those people judge me. And the rest of the public, I mean, they're just the rest of the public. You know, they comment on what they are able to observe and we are in a bit of a circus so you know um uh, those who get entertained um by you know uh seeing a car crash they'll get entertained by that um those who um uh want to see uh, someone striving for um a more virtuous existence mm -hmm. they'll mm -hmm. be mm -hmm. you know um uh praising that and um those who just don't like privilege at all, they'll always have something wrong to find about people in a privileged position. Sure. You know what I mean? doesn't matter what good they're doing. Um, people don't like privilege. And I'm, fortunately for me, I'm in a privileged position. But I also don't like privilege. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You don't like you know elitism, I mean? probably. I hate them. Yeah. I hate them. I hate famous people. I hate rich people. I hate all of that. You know what I mean? And... Um, um, I want to become one of them so I can destroy all of them. <laughs> <laughs> because that's the only way to destroy all of them. You know what I mean? Oof. You need to get into the building to blow it yeah, up. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm. That, that makes sense, man. 
Um, it, it, it's, it's interesting because you speak of that there is a, a group of people who like their entertainment and the, seeing the car crash. Mm. They'll even take out their phones and record the yeah. car crash so yeah. that they can get views on TikTok yeah. from the car crash. There are people who actually want virtuous people, yeah. who want people who are upright, yeah. who want people who are disciplined, yes. who want to see people who speak the truth and yeah. live for the truth. And then they yeah. So, but the problem is, I think we still live in a country that has an internet that is so westernized that the entertainer, the one who records the bad things, is, is the loudest voice on the internet? Well, I just think that, dude, six out of ten people don't have jobs. Hmm. So you put yourself in a situation where, like, it's not eat the rich, it's eat the employed. Do you understand? You got a job as an engineer? Damn. Oh, I saw you at some nightclub or whatever. Yo, whatever. Oh, you're with strippers or whatever. Ha, ah, there. Yeah, I'm going to expose you. Yeah. So I, I can you. take your job. I hear you. That's the environment that we live in. That's why I don't enjoy being home or in South Africa because I know that that is the environment that I'm in. That's why I'm happy with being my friends because those are actually people that I know that genuinely want me to succeed, want me to progress in life. You know what I mean? And get nothing from me materially. You know what I mean? Other than the company that we share with one another. We don't help each other in business or anything else. And we keep that separated on purpose so that we can have a real reason. You know, if we did business together, it's going to blur the lines. Correct. At what time are you acting in the best interest of your business prospects or what time are you acting in the best interest of, of our friendship? friendship? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I, I, I keep those um, completely separated. And that's just what it is. Um, uh, like, you know, people don't have. And people that don't have want what those who have have or those who they perceive have because there's so many who don't have even the one who has a little but what is perception to a person who doesn't have it's real it's real you understand what i'm saying it's real yeah yeah it's that person reality. is eating kfc i yes, can see the lived reality i am hungry correct <laughs> yeah. yeah i understand what i'm saying that might be that person's last money they might have been given money for that yeah, for that the perception is that they're eating yeah you understand yeah i want that I want to take that. Mm. And that's the country that we live in. We need to understand that. And as we move up, you understand what I'm saying? We get it, the traffic light. The guy's not going to care that you do work, you've got engineer your uh, life um, uh, as a platform and as a network and everything else. He's going to take your car. Mm. He doesn't care if you play for KZ Chiefs. He's mm. going to put bullets inside your body. Mm. Do you understand what I'm saying? That's the environment that we're in and we need to accept that. Um, it's a very different environment. You go to a place like New York, very different because they're much, much richer. And there's people who are just as poor as in South Africans. But a billionaire can walk in the street and no one's going to chop his head off. <laughs> because almost everybody has a job. Or oh, there's opportunities for there's jobs. There's opportunities for jobs. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. There's opportunities for jobs. There's a restaurant in every corner saying, mm -hmm. hey, we're hiring, we're hiring. If you mm -hmm. want to be a bartender, if you want to do this, you want to street street, you, you can do something for survival in that environment. Here, do you understand? Survival is... Like, a privilege. Mm. Survival is a privilege. You understand what I'm saying? Mm. And it's a dog-eat-dog. Dog. It's the worst thing ever. And that's the environment that we live in in South Africa. And so that's why I have very low expectations of people's perception of me. Do you understand what I'm saying? That's why it doesn't hurt me. I walked to my lawyer's offices. They're near Gandhi Square on Fox Street. So I'm walking. Um, I hopped out the Uber. And I'm walking and... Obviously, I can hear people because my earphones were off. I wasn't listening to anything. I can hear the people talking. Oh, yeah, yeah. Saying my name. Oh, that's him. That's him. That's him. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. We have had a whatever. Some woman walks past me. Oh, oh, I'm a fan. I turned around and I said, oh, thank you. I ignored everyone that had all those negative things to say. The one that said, oh, I actually follow your work and yeah. I, I, I like what you do. Cool. I gave up my time of day and I went on my merry way. Um, you know, I could have. Now I've gotten angry because I've heard all these comments by these other people who are pointing at me, making me some sort of object. And I am an object in their eyes because they don't know me personally. And then I would have been hardened. And then by the time I got that one person who gave me a nice compliment says I'm a fan, I wouldn't have then had um, the energy within me, right, after accepting all that negativity to then acknowledge that person. You know what I mean? And who knows? That person might never meet me again. But the one opportunity that I had to meet them, I at least gave them, you know... Um, Kindness. Them, well, 
I, I don't want to put it in terms of like what I did, mm-hmm. but who I am. Okay. You know what I mean? I'm just like a nice person. If you know, like, hey, you bump into me, like I want to leave an impression upon you sure. that, you know, this is a person I wouldn't mind meeting again or speaking to again. Or yeah, yeah that's it. That's how I was raised, you know? Um, and, and that was it. And I, I don't know whether I'll ever bump into that person again. Um, but at least they don't have the impression of like, oh, he just became very rude with me. And then I had another um, uh, incident with an Uber driver, and I even reported the incident. And dude, I never fight inside the Uber. Um, I don't even have Uber. I'm banned on Uber. I, don't. I had a situation with um, Metro cops who were searching through uh, my car and uh, got into my wife's bags after a gig and everything else. And she got so angry, she even sent me to anger management. And I'm like, I need anger management for stopping someone violating you. Like, clearly, you listen to like other people's impression more than you judge the actual situation or what's actually happening. This person is committing a crime, right? He's violating. You know, he doesn't have the right to search through all the stuff. He's got nothing to suspect. Do you understand? He's wasting our time. It's, it's almost curfew time. We need to make it back home by curfew. You understand? We're trying to obey the law, and this person is, 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 is violating us. And then you are in support of this person because he's got a badge that says he's a policeman, which means you judge the person based on what position they hold in society. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. You don't judge the person based on who they are, their character, and what they do, their actions. You know what I mean? And um, that's wrong. And I'm not going to now back down out of the situation because this guy's got a gun and a badge. No, 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 no. No, no, no. I'm a man. I'm going to stand my ground. You know, I'm going to stand for what's right and I'm going to be honest and I'm going to be truthful. And guess what? His colleagues called him out. Said, like, why are you doing this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Why are you doing this? Can you go and report this person and say, listen, this person did this at a roadblock? And then, no, you cannot. But he can go and report you at your superiors and say, you abused them at a roadblock. You are the one who's in the wrong. So, please. Yeah. You know what I mean? And guess what? I've got a good relationship with all Metro Cops. <laughs> why? Because they hate the fact that they've got this perception of being corrupt. The ones that actually are out there to do their job and do it well. Sure. You know, they hate that perception. They hate that perception. I mean, and this is the actual issue that we've got right now is that because of how easy it is to gain prominence, you know what I mean, and how easy it is to hide your past, your real true past from the people that know you, we get a whole lot of people that get elevated into positions of influence mm. that already have a past that they've hidden, you know what I mean, who've already gotten away with so, whatever, who've got, already got smaller and skeletons. And now those skeletons hold them back from being people that are going to be honest and reliable in the future. And those are the people that get elevated to the top. And we are elevating people to the top because everyone at the top has got smaller and skeletons. So they'll pick other people who've got smaller and skeletons because if you got smaller and skeletons, you won't expose my ske- mm. smaller and skeletons Correct. and Correct. we can be together. Then we are a conglomerate at the top. In the that, top place. That, 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 that stops skeletons from, being, from coming out and through that, as you say, then there is no accountability. There is no saying, hey, dude, we can't be doing this because this hurts yeah. people. This exploits people. So, and you can get away with it and continue. Hmm. That's actually what's being said. That is the implicit you know, connotation that is there. <laughs> Brother, let's leave it there. <laughs> with you, we can go on and on. No, thank but, you. But, but definitely on, on my end, I think I have a, 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 I struggle. I've got a cognitive dissonance. Yeah with uh with people who lived at the hands of people who have so much power and were yeah. abused but yeah. i'm hearing your reasoning when you say that um there's there are instances where even if a person has so much power it's your choice you can leave yeah there are instances where yeah. it's your choice you can leave and many people we know don't leave because there are privileges attached to staying in that toxic cycle of the abuse so yeah and then they allow the person to go on and abuse other people you know what I'm yeah yeah they'll yeah. leave a broke man not mm. a rich man hmm. yeah thank you brother sure, sure. i'll see you guys <laughs> next episode sure sure <laughs>
Kalu Luxury Villas and Suites, your private sanctuary of opulence and elegance. Nestled amongst the lush, sun-kissed landscapes of Durban, KwaZulu-Natal, this Kalu Luxury Villa is a paradise of tranquility, offering breathtaking panoramic views of the neighborhood. Step into a world of refined luxury where every detail has been meticulously crafted to create an atmosphere of sophistication and comfort. This villa is kept within a gated and secure property for your peace of mind. The Kalu Villa is available for both short-term and long-term stays, making it the ideal location for your next vacation or special event. This villa boasts spacious living areas and floor-to-ceiling windows that flood the interior with natural light, making you feel at one with the surrounding beauty paired with multiple terraces, an outdoor lounge and a dining area. Live the dream, make memories and indulge in the life you deserve. Contact us today to book your stay or to learn more about this exquisite property. Your oasis of opulence awaits.